Quick, name every device that's connected to your home network right now. It's a lot of devices, isn't it? You got desktops, laptops, phones, tablets, TVs, speakers, lights, toasters, refrigerators, dogs, cats. What I'm getting at is that you probably have a lot of devices connected to your network. And I bet if you pulled up your client table, you'd see devices in there that you probably don't even recognize, which makes sense now more than ever to have VLANs set up on your home network. And of course you know what VLANs are, right? Right? Oh, you don't? Well, good thing you clicked on this video because it's basically gonna be all about VLANs, what they are and why you need them. So stay tuned and we're gonna talk all about it. Okay, VLANs or virtual LANs or virtual local area networks. You may have heard people talk about these when talking about network configurations because they're pretty popular and have gotten more popular now that we see so many devices connect to our networks. The easiest way to describe VLANs is essentially segregating your network into different pieces. The way I like to think about it is that consider your home network well your home or your actual house. VLANs would be considered the rooms in your house. So 99% of the time when you set up a home network, you're actually already gonna have a VLAN and it's just gonna be called your LAN, which is gonna essentially be VLAN number one. Now, what is that number? We'll talk about it in a minute. Back to the house analogy. So let's assume you have a house, but you live in one of those giant metal warehouses that is just all open space. That would be your house with a single VLAN. No matter where you go in the house, there's no room segregated. Your living room is your bathroom, your bathroom is your kitchen, you, and your kitchen is your backyard. You wouldn't want that, right? Maybe you would, maybe you're freaking weird, I don't know. Introducing VLANs, we can segregate your house into actual rooms. So now your bathroom isn't your kitchen, all your rooms have doors with locks on them, and you can specify who can go into what room and what goes in what room makes way more sense, doesn't it? That's VLANs on your home network. But why? Why do we need VLANs? Obviously it makes sense to have rooms in a house, but I functioned all my life with a basic home network setup and I'm perfectly fine. You might be. I mean, you might be perfectly fine living in a warehouse home, but it's probably not optimal. VLANs are set up on your home network for, I would say three main reasons. For security, to have different rules, and for organization. The main one being security. Let's consider this. When you have a party at your house, now I know you're all a bunch of introverts and you don't actually have parties, but let's imagine you had a party at your house. So you have a bunch of people over. Do you leave your bedroom unlocked with all your valuables just sitting there? Probably not, because while you know most of the people that are coming over to your party, you may not know everybody. And even if you do, you might not trust them. So you're gonna want a part of your house separated from the rest of the party. In the same way you have a VLAN that has all your personal devices with personal information on them in their own separate VLAN. So here's where we can kind of marry this analogy together. So you actually have a party and you see that sketchy dude come over and he opens his phone opening a sketchy app with all types of sketchy things connected to it. You don't want him connecting to your main network where all your personal devices live. What if his device infects your other devices? There's many malware attacks out there that can basically jump from his phone to any device on the network. So you don't want Mr. Sketchbag connecting to your main VLAN. So you have a separate VLAN just for him and other guests. Well, what if it's not even a person? What if it's all those IoT devices you have connected to your home? So like I mentioned before, you know, you got refrigerators that can connect now, you got doorbells, you got lights, you have so many things connected to the internet and all of them might not have the best security features built in. So let's say someone figures out a hack for your smart light bulbs. All of a sudden the light bulbs in your house are a security risk to the rest of your network. So let's take all of those IoT devices and put them in their own room or VLAN. I think you see where I'm going with this. Segregation for security reasons. Let's talk about rules. Say you want different rules for different users on your network. So a common example for this is if you have children. So you have the main network for you and all the adults and nothing's really blocked off, but then you want a separate VLAN or separate network for 
your kids that have different rules on them. Maybe it blocks certain sites. Maybe it cuts down on the bandwidth that can be used. Maybe it has rules on it of when, you know, it can even be accessed. That's a good reason to have a separate VLAN. It makes setting rules so much easier because you can set it to an entire VLAN rather than, you know, pick and choose certain devices. And the last one is organization. This goes less into a home network and more into a business sense where if you have multiple sites or, you know, multiple floors and you have a large network and you kind of want to separate those to make it easier to organize them and figure out where what devices are where uh, quickly, that's another reason. But if you're watching this and you're a network administrator for a business, I hope you know what a VLAN is already. So we talked about what a VLAN is, why you'd want a VLAN. Next step is to talk about how you even implement a VLAN. And it's basically gonna be driven by the hardware in your network. Everything from Netgear to Linksys, to TP-Link to PFSense to Unify, they all have different ways of setting up VLANs. Now I have a couple of videos going over how to set up VLANs, both on PFSense as well as TP-Link Omada. I'll link them down below. But what we're gonna to do today is jump into my actual home network setup so that I can show you how I have it configured and hopefully it'll make more sense when you can see my configuration and I can kind of walk through exactly how I have it set up. I have a pretty, I would consider moderate level home networking setup, but all you have to know for the purpose of this video is that I have a PFSense router where I configure my VLANs. I have a smart switch by QNAP. Then I have a bunch of devices connected to that switch, whether that's a smart switch, uh, access point, or actual computers. So you'll see when we dive into here, but it's really not that complicated. So when you're configuring VLANs, two terms you're gonna come across a lot is trunk ports and access ports. And these are essentially synonymous with tagged and untagged ports. So a trunk port on your hardware is essentially a port that allows you to feed multiple VLAN tags through one physical port. An access port is essentially a dumb port. It doesn't understand tagging. It's gonna take the data that comes in and push it through. If there's any tags on there for VLANs, it's not gonna know what it's talking about. Now there's way more details to this, but for the basics, that's all you need to know. So let's dive into it. Now I mentioned that I'm running PFSense, so that's where we are going to start. Now what I want you to do here is completely ignore uh, the WAN section and the OPS section and pretty much ignore this top part. All you need to know is that you can see our VLAN tag one is here. And for 99% of users out there, VLAN tag one is dedicated to your default LAN and all untagged packets. So if you have no VLAN set up anywhere in your network, it's essentially gonna be called VLAN one. Now, if we look at my LAN, you can see the members of it are zero T and two. Now I really don't like how PFSense implements VLANs. I mean, you get used to it after you've done it for a little while, but it's not really that intuitive. So what I'm asking of you is just ignore this zero T you see on all of um, my different VLANs. This is essentially saying take the default VLAN and apply that tag one to all traffic. Um, it's really not intuitive, but let's ignore that for now. What we are going to look at is our LAN, our guest network VLAN, and our virtual VLAN. You can see here for LAN, we have member two. That's basically saying, what port do we want this traffic to go on? And if we go over here to ports, again, not very intuitive. You'll see our LAN is actually on port two. So when we set up a VLAN, we want our LAN traffic to go on port two. And if we look in here, you'll see that is untagged, meaning that all traffic going across this that is not tagged is essentially gonna be in VLAN one. So if we go down to the two other VLANs I have, the guest network and virtual VLAN, you'll see they're slightly different. Starting with guest network, we have a VLAN tag of 50. If we go in there, we will see two is tagged, meaning that we're still going across two. That's the physical port we're going across. But now all the packets from this VLAN are tagged with the tag 50. And it's exactly the same for the virtual VLAN, except that we are using VLAN tag three. Now the tag number is completely arbitrary. You can use any number you want up to, I think, uh, 4,095 uh, or something. Okay, so at our router level, we essentially have a single port, 
port number two carrying VLAN tag one, untagged, and then we also have it carrying VLAN tag 50 and VLAN tag three, both tagged. Now that'll make sense when we go to the smart switch. So let's do that. So when we go into our smart switch, which is a uh, QNAP QSW M40, M4084C. I highly recommend this switch. Uh, the GUI is fantastic. The performance is great and I've had zero problems with it. And as you're about to see, the VLAN configuration is so much more intuitive than on PFSense. So here we are in our VLAN table and immediately it's much nicer to look at. Now it's not too complicated what's going on here, so let me explain. All the traffic coming from my router, port two, is going directly into my switch on port one. So you can see for port one, we have VLAN tag one, untagged, VLAN three tagged, and VLAN 50 tagged. That essentially means that our port one is listening and everything that is untagged is gonna be VLAN one, and it's gonna be listening for tags of three and 50, which we have set up. Now, if we added another VLAN, say VLAN 69 on our PF sense and didn't configure it in here, all those tagged packets would just get dropped because our switch isn't set up to listen for them. So it'll just drop them. But then as you go through here, you see some slightly different configurations. Let me explain what all the basic ones are doing here. These are all the ports on my switch. And as you can see, most of them are just set to untagged VLAN one, meaning that all traffic that comes through it, if it's not tagged, it's in VLAN one. And that's how most devices, I would say even all devices are configured straight out of the box. But here you can see we have two ports that are different, three and six. Let's start with three. Actually, let's start with six. So for six, you can see we have nothing for one, nothing for three, and untagged for 50. That doesn't make sense. I thought you said that untagged is VLAN ID one. In most cases, that's correct. And that's the default behavior. But port six is actually running to an access point, a dumb access point that does not understand VLANs. So what we've done here is said, okay, for port six, we want all untagged data to fall into VLAN 50. And then we ran that port directly to a dumb access point, meaning that if I connect my phone or any wireless device to that access point, all the packets are gonna be untagged, but they will fall into VLAN 50. Now you can only have a single untagged VLAN on a port at a time. So it would make no sense for me to have untagged 50 and untagged one because if traffic is coming in and none of it's tagged, it's gonna have no idea what to do with it. And in this case, we've set it to 50 and it actually won't even let you have multiple untagged VLANs on a single port. So if I went here and said, okay, for port six, I also want three untagged. See, when I save that, it just moves the untagged to three. So let's move that back. And this is the configuration you'd want if you're trying to pass a specific VLAN down to a dumb access point or a dumb switch. And when I say dumb, I just mean it's not managed or not a smart switch or smart device that can handle VLANs and tagging. So that's what I mean when I say dumb. Now let's talk about port three. What are we doing here? Well, port three runs directly from one smart switch to another. And this is actually a smaller, I think eight port uh, smart switch I have set up next to my server. And the reason I wanted to have this is because I wanted the flexibility of running multiple VLANs to different devices physically in that area of the house. So I needed another smart switch to do that. Luckily you can find uh, smaller smart switches for pretty cheap these days. I think the one I bought was about $25. So definitely recommend picking up one of those if you have multiple VLANs in your network. So that port three is going to carry untagged packets for VLAN one and tagged packets for VLAN three. Now let's go over to that device and check it out. So this is it, it's a Netgear GS305E. It's actually five ports and it's a smart managed plus switch, meaning that it understands VLANs. So we've gone into our VLAN setup and you can see we're in the advanced section, which isn't too advanced. I would say this is more intuitive than the PF sense for sure, but it's not as good as the QNAP switch, but you know, it's doable. So here you can see we have our two VLAN IDs we wanna listen for, one and three. Now one is our default and three is our virtual VLAN. So here you can see on all five ports, 
we are listening for VLAN tag one, which like I said, is not intuitive here because that's actually untagged packets. But if you get this far in the configuration, you'll get it. Then we've also added the functionality on ports three and five to listen for tagged packets in VLAN three. So if you were to look at this switch physically, I have a CAT6 cable running from port three on my QNAP switch, which is sending untagged VLAN one and tagged VLAN three to this smart switch into port five, which is listening for VLAN one and VLAN three. Is it starting to make sense now? Then you can also see that port three also listens for VLAN three, meaning that I can take a physical plug and plug that into a device and send along VLAN 3. So what I'm using this for is I actually have a multi-port NIC in my server and I want multiple VLAN connections directly to my server. So I can run multiple cables from that switch and have one physical cable for my main VLAN or VLAN 1 and I can have another physical cable for VLAN 3 or my virtual VLAN. Everything's nice and separated. I have physical cables that can go to physical devices. I have an access point that can take untagged data and pass that through to a dedicated VLAN and everything's essentially separated and good to go. So that's my configuration. But let's back up a second. We talked about security and how VLANs are separated because you don't want a device in one VLAN to have access to a device on another VLAN, except maybe you do. Let's talk about it. So remember my setup, I have a LAN and two VLANs. Well, basically my LAN is where all my personal devices live. Now, if I'm using my computer or workstation on my actual LAN, I wanna be able to talk to devices on my other VLANs. So I wanna be able to talk to them, but I don't want them to be able to talk back. It's like my dad used to always say, hey, I'm, I'm the main LAN and you're just a, you're the kid VLAN. I'm gonna tell you what to do, but don't talk back. I said that like every day. So looking at my rules, you'll see that for my LAN, I don't really have anything blocking connections to my other networks. However, if I go into guest, you'll see we have a rule here that essentially blocks all traffic back to my main LAN, which is 10.0.0.1 uh, subnet. So you can see here, it essentially says allow all traffic unless the destination is our private network, which is our main LAN. And same goes for our virtual one. Allow all traffic except for back to our LAN. So this configuration, essentially our virtual one could talk to our guest. And that's just how I have it set up. If you don't want it to be like that, if you want everything separated, go ahead and do it. Now I'm obviously running PFSense to do this. What you're running, it may be completely different, but every single network configuration I've seen to set up VLANs has rules in place or ways to set up rules to allow security between different VLANs. Now, one note I will say is that PFSense by default, when you set up a new VLAN, has zero access to anything, and you actually have to set up rules to allow traffic. But I recently did a video with the TP-Link Omada setup, and by default, when you set up a new network, it has access to everything and you have to set up rules to block. So very different ways of implementing new networks between those two systems. So that's my configuration. That's how I have VLAN set up. I definitely plan on adding more, but I personally don't have too many IoT devices yet. But when I accumulate more, I plan on making a dedicated IoT VLAN just for those. But I know plenty of people out there that have a whole bunch of VLAN set up and that's awesome, go ahead and do it. I just only have the need for two. But yeah, I hope this was informative for you. I hope this gave you a better understanding of VLANs. So now when you're at the block party and you're kicking back some beers, talking about uh, sports and stocks and uh, home networking, uh, you'll have a lot to talk about in terms of VLANs. So, but if you like this video, uh, be sure to drop a like below. If you're running a bunch of VLANs out there, let me know how you have your network set up. And you know what are you using? I'm using PFSense. I know some people are using Unify. Some people are using Omada, but there's a lot out there. So let me know what your configuration looks like. As well as if you have any other network related questions, uh, drop them down below and I'll try my best to help. But that's all I have for you today. Please consider subscribing if you like this type of content. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one.